Well, welcome back to Storebox. We're glad that you joined us here today. Uh, we're on our fourth day of 66 days through the Bible, and we've come to the book of Numbers. Numbers is the fourth book of the Old Testament, also written by Moses. The title refers to the two numberings of the Israelites. The first, the census of those brought out of Egypt, and the second, of the generation that would follow. Numbers records Israel's experiences as they wander through the wilderness. We see God's provision, and yet we see man's stubbornness and rebellion. And this book contains both history and laws. I've chosen today Numbers 22, verses 31. The Bible says, Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. You know, have you ever wanted to do something, but you keep running into a wall? You pray, you fast, you do all you can, but you can't seem to make it where you want to go. Well, Balaam was heading down a path, riding his donkey. But the donkey was able to see the angel, and he stopped. Balaam became angry at his donkey, but in reality, his donkey saved his life. So often, just like the lamb, we go through one day after another blind to the spiritual warfare. God's directions and God's plans, and we're simply focused on where we want to go and what we want to get done. So many things, though, can mess up our plans and get in our way. They can slow us down, they can make us turn around, or, or just stop us in our tracks. We can become impatient, we can become frustrated, stressed, or angry, or even bitter, or like the lamb did, start kicking on his donkey. Or we can stop. We can acknowledge that you know what? God is in control. And ask Him how we should respond. Ask Him to open our eyes to see His perspective on the situation. Or we can just forge ahead and suffer the consequences. If the Lamb would have forged ahead, He would have been killed. You know, one characteristic of God's Holy Spirit is that He is a restrainer. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. If the Spirit of God could leave this earth, all that would remain is evil and sin. Satan is not free to do as he pleases. As powerful and wicked as he is, we need only read the book of Job to see that he is restrained by God and can do nothing that God does not allow. I talk a lot about our freedom. As humans, we have the ability to make choices, but we must keep in mind that God is still sovereign. He can restrain the devil, he can restrain sin, and he can certainly restrain us. I believe God's ultimate desire is to restrain through the still, small voice of his Holy Spirit. Yet he can use angels, he can use his creation, he can use circumstances, and he can certainly use people, he can use a donkey. God has every resource at his disposal. When man sinned, God put him out of the regard and restrained him from returning and eating from the tree of life. When sin had gotten out of control on the earth, God sent the flood and wiped everything out except those in the ark. When man attempted to reach heaven with the Tower of Babel, God restrained him by confusing the language and so man was scattered throughout the earth. He restrained the lions from attacking Daniel. He kept Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from being burned in the furnace. He commanded the wind to stop and saved his disciples in the storm. If it were not for God's active work in our lives, we would all be in big trouble. Without God's Spirit in us, our flesh would run the show, and we could only live a life of sin. We've all had close calls in life, whether it was a near auto accident or getting caught in a dangerous storm, some near-death experience, yet we made it through. Was it just luck or coincidence, or was God working to keep you safe, restraining the devil and protecting you? How many times in just one day we had the opportunity to stop and say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your protection, for your active work in my life. God is everywhere, and so often we never see Him. Our eyes and our heart are so focused on what we see and feel in the natural that we miss what God is doing in the supernatural. God's not going to give you and I direction for the next ten years. He gives us directions one step at a time, one day at a time, one prayer at a time. He wants us to totally depend on Him. When we're stopped in the road, we need to look up. We need to ask God to open our eyes. You know, it could be the devil that's in the way. God may tell you to walk straight ahead. He'll make a way once you start obeying Him and going where He told you to go. Or He may tell you that you're going the wrong way and you need to turn around. Perhaps the most difficult is when we simply have to wait in faith. It seems like nothing's happening and we can't go anywhere. 
Well, it's then that we must trust God that He's in control. That He'll sustain us. That He'll fulfill His Word and He'll conform us into the image of His Son in the process. Don't let your flesh or the devil convince you like Adam and Eve that God is keeping something good from you. That He's restraining something you need or deserve. The Bible says no good thing will leave a hope for those who walk uprightly. But if you delight yourself in the Lord, He'll give you the desires of your heart and that God will supply all your needs. God used a donkey to restrain the lamb and save his life. And he can use things in our lives too that we may not expect. The key, the key is always to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God bless you. I'll see you back here tomorrow. 66 days. 66 months. Let's make it through the following God bless you.